Hi, my name is Noel and I work at Tamarack Nature Center. Um, I'm a naturalist coordinator there and one of the things I coordinate are our drop-in discoveries. Maybe one of you has joined us for our drop-in discoveries. They're every Saturday throughout the summer from 10 to noon. And then um, on the other months, it's the first Saturday of the month. And for our drop-in discoveries, we do everything from having owl showings, having interactions where you can touch and look at our reptiles and amphibians, and even experiences with our beekeepers are helping us extract honey. So today we're doing our drop in discovery on Facebook because we are unable to meet at the nature center, but I still wanted to give people an opportunity to do a little learning today at their leisure and maybe inspire you to do an art project. Today our theme is going to be agates. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about agates and show you some rocks in my collection. And there's also a video that you can watch that's a time lapse of an artist, Chelsea, who's a friend of mine and volunteered to make a video showing her creating an agate watercolor painting. She has included a list of um, items that are needed for this project. And if you're interested, you can um, go and watch that and create your own piece of art. Um, for this segment, I am going to talk to you about agates, a little bit about what they're about. I'm going to show you some agates in my collection and maybe show you some ones that are really cool that might inspire you in your artwork. Um, I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you enjoy listening to me share some stories about agates in their collection. So we're here at my house and um, at my house I have my rock collection. I have been a rock collector since I was very little. And I've even gotten some rocks from some of my family members who were collecting them before I was born. These rocks are mostly consist of agates or Lake Superior agates. Those Lake Superior agates are found throughout Minnesota in the Midwest and they were deposited here during the last glacier period. These big rocks of ice picked up many of those rocks and as they moved and melted, deposited them all over the place. So these agates can be found on the North Shore of Lake Superior but they can also be found in farmlands in Minnesota or even along the Mississippi River in Minneapolis. So they're all out there and I encourage you, if you have the opportunity, to go out looking for agates. So agates are something that Minnesotans are very familiar with. It's our state gemstone and it's one that um, many people throughout our state have fallen in love with. And I really like it because of the colors and the shininess to it and I really enjoy um, polishing my agates. Um, I have here, oh let me just turn the camera a little bit. This is my rock tumbler. Um, a rock tumbler is used to polish agates and you can also polish other very hard rocks. Inside here you put the agates along with grit. Grit is a material that helps polish the agates. It's made of fine particles of rocks and sands and minerals and when put in here and roll for weeks at time, they will polish the agates. And so I do this um, on occasion. It takes a lot of rocks to fill up a big rock tumbler like this. So I don't do it as often as I would like to, but um, when I do, it's a really fun process because I love to see the rocks transform from their unpolished um, state to their polished state. I have a couple um, examples of some of my agates. The first one I want to show you is an unpolished agate. If you look closely, you can see some of the lines, which is a very common characteristic of agates. And it's pretty rough and has some pretty sharp, direct cuts into it. You might notice some other things about it also. This is um, a polished agate. So very smooth edges. Those have all been smoothed out during the polishing process. And there's nice lines, really, and you can really see those, um, the distinction between the layers. Those layers were created when um, the rocks were formed. They were formed in lava in the gas bubbles that were created. And they were formed when groundwater came in and deposited minerals. Those minerals created those layers, and the layers are made up of iron and quartz and those create the colors. Iron, that red rusty color, and quartz is a white um, almost clear or shiny color. 
give you a chance to look at them both side by side and see some of the differences. I think the agates are beautiful, whether they're polished or not. It's just sometimes the polished ones are kind of fun to have and look at, or you can make them into different things. Here is a rock that has gone through the polisher, um, but it hasn't gone through the final polish. So it's still pretty um, opaque. It still has kind of a cloudy appearance to it. I'm gonna now grab one of my rocks that has been through that final stage. And you can see how much more shiny it is. A lot of agates have these little dimples in them too. That's a characteristic of them. So in my collection, um, I got a lot of mine um, walking about with my relatives. I really enjoy going with my grandma and my aunt um, with our dogs, walking some dirt roads up where they live in northern Minnesota. And I would always have my head on the ground looking for that red, that shiny color. And it's um, there's some times when it's really helpful to go out. Nature can help you. Maybe after a rain on sunny days, those really make the agates shine and make it easier to find them. A little secret for me. Um, but agates um, are found in many different sizes. Um, the bigger they are, the more rare they are. Um, but there's a lot of the little ones. And I even collect the little ones because they help polish the bigger ones in um, the tumbling process. And they're really cool too. They, there are some really tiny ones that have amazing characteristics. Let me show you one in just a second here. Here are two of my really, really tiny ones. But they too have so many cool layers and colors to them. So they're still very pretty. And um, there's different ways that agates look that people prefer more than others or they might like the colors more. There's lighter colored agates, darker colored agates. There's also agates that have circle rings on them, like a complete round centric circle. And those are called eyes on the agate and some people really like to collect and look at those too. I'll also show you some just of my really tiny, tiny ones. And these are ones that have been polished um, over time and are very, very tiny. But very cool. I collect all sizes of them. So Agates um, are very pretty and different people use them for different things. There's a lot of jewelry made with agates or people use them for decoration or even a centerpiece. Um, whether it's polished or unpolished, I think they look really pretty and different artists um, enjoy using them because they really stand out and differ from a lot of other rocks out there. I want to encourage you now to go and watch Chelsea's video of her making an agate watercolor. She paints on the canvas water and then traces it with different amounts of pigment and other water and creates layers to make all of those circular layers on the agate. I'm going to challenge you to try out different techniques to see if you can create those layers and I hope you have fun with it. If you want to share um, any pictures or videos of you um, creating your watercolor or your finished product or maybe you just have some agates in your collection that you want to um, show to other people, go right ahead and post them here on our Facebook. I want to thank you guys for joining me for this drop-in discovery today. Just a little bit of time to share with you guys about agates and have a little bit of fun creating an art project using nature as an inspiration. Um, I hope that we can um, get together again and do other drop-ins um, next June or in June here. So um, take care, everybody, and thank you.